The second half of the Lord's Prayer has some of the greatest challenges in the whole Bible. Today, in part two of this message on the meaning of the Lord's Prayer, we'll look at forgiving others, avoiding temptation, and surrendering to God. So stick around, because all that and more is coming up. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello everyone, Pastor Kevin Patterson here, seeking to follow and help you follow the teachings of Jesus. Today we're continuing to take a deeper look into the meaning of the Lord's Prayer. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus tells the story of a certain king who was going over his accounts. He wanted to cash in on some of the debts his servants owed him. One servant was brought in who owed him a lot of money, about 20 years worth of wages, that he couldn't pay. It was like the bank suddenly calling in your entire mortgage at once. When the king ordered that the man and his family be sold into slavery to pay the debt, the man fell on his knees and begged for mercy. The king took pity on him and forgave the entire debt. Now that servant, the one who had been forgiven so much, went out and found a fellow servant who owed him a little bit of money, about a day's wages. He grabbed the man by the throat and demanded that he pay up. When the fellow servant begged for mercy, the first servant refused and had him thrown into debtor's prison. Some other servants saw what happened. They were angry and reported it to the king. The king called the man in and confronted him. He told him, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? The king threw the unmerciful servant into prison to be tortured until the whole debt was paid off. Jesus stated the moral of the story by saying, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. It seems that forgiving others isn't optional, but something God commands us to do. But he doesn't just command it, he inspires it by forgiving our debts. In the Lord's Prayer, we say, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. How many times have we prayed that? Hundreds? It means Forgive us our sins, even as we forgive everyone who sins against us. But wait, do we? Do we forgive everyone who sins against us? To forgive is not to take revenge or punish. When we're attacked, though, we are so tempted to get even. When someone does something wrong to us, we want them to be punished. We blame, we scold, we hold grudges. Forgiving is one of the hardest things that we do as Christians. When we see how Jesus has forgiven us, though, it moves us to have mercy and compassion on others. God's grace transforms our hearts. If God, being perfect and holy, can forgive our great sin, then can't we, having been forgiven so much, have mercy on others? A grudge is like an idol that comes between us and God. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Pray for the grace to forgive, even as you pray for God's forgiveness. I believe that God will work that grace in our hearts if we're willing. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. As we read in James 1, God doesn't tempt anyone to evil. The problem isn't that God leads us into temptation, but that we lead ourselves. James 1.14 Each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. It doesn't make any sense to cruise down the junk food aisle praying, lead us not into temptation. Who led you there? So can we cooperate with God on this? If we don't want to be led into temptation and we want to be delivered from evil, then we'd better not lead ourselves there. Jesus said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Now, he wasn't talking about maiming yourself physically, but there might be some places, some relationships, some activities in your life that need to be cut off if they lead you into temptation. Paul wrote to Timothy, but you, man of God, 
flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. If we focus on developing our relationship with God, building Christ-like character, and developing healthy and fulfilling relationships with one another, then avoiding temptation will become much easier. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This traditional ending to the Lord's Prayer tells us three things that belong to God. The first is the kingdom. Jesus said before his ascension, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Then he told us to go and make disciples of all nations, building his kingdom here, spreading his rule throughout the earth. The second thing that belongs to God is the power. Now, power is the ability to do things, to change things. Hardly anyone wants to admit that they want power. We just want to change things. But power is influence, the ability to change things. And in this prayer, we surrender ourselves to God, recognizing that He alone has the ultimate power. Once we recognize that, we can use the power that He's given us, the power of His love, the power of His Spirit, for His kingdom. The third thing that belongs to God is the glory. Glory here means praise or credit. And we want all of the praise and the credit, all of the glory, to go to God. As the Apostle Paul wrote, For from Him, and through Him, and for Him are all things. To Him be the glory forever. Amen. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, give us the grace to forgive one another from our hearts, even as we want to be forgiven. Give us the strength to keep away from temptation and free us from the power and harm of evil. Help us to take our place in your kingdom, surrendering all the power to you and giving you all the glory forever. Amen. I'm Pastor Kevin Patterson, seeking to follow and help you follow the teachings of Jesus. I hope you've enjoyed part two of this message on the Lord's Prayer. If you know someone else who would, please share it with them. And remember to subscribe. God bless you as you follow Jesus, and we'll see you in the next video.